Hi there, this is Chris with Peace of Mind Art and Crafts and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you, due to popular demand, how to make my um, snippet slow stitch rolls. And uh, that's kind of what they're called universally. universally. They're not really well known. I saw them on uh, Rachel's channel, Rachel at Roxy Creations. And I also did a uh, giveaway recently, which, uh, by the way, I have not selected the winner for that yet, so you still have a chance, you may still have a chance to uh, get in on that. Um, you can check on my website for the giveaway uh, video. Uh, I plan on, I have reached 100 subscribers, and so I plan on um, giving people a little bit more time to to enter, and then I plan on giving away the prize uh, next, probably next week sometime. Right now it's um, October 29th. I'm sorry, October 30th. And so I plan on doing that uh, in within the next week. So um, stay tuned for that. Uh, but I had so many people who liked the slow stitching and wanted to uh, to learn how to do it. So I thought I'd show a little bit of it. It is similar to two things. It's similar to snippet rolls where you use paper and lace and all kinds of buttons and charms and so on to make um, a roll. And only you're use, using mostly fabrics on this one instead of paper. Um, you could use paper on this one if you wanted to, but uh, I pretty much stick to uh, using the fabric on this this kind of slow stitch roll uh, because it is a lot harder to, to uh, hand stitch paper. So we'll go with the we'll go with the fabric on this, and you can make it any size you want. Um, basically, the reason it's made in a roll is so that you can then roll it around a spool so that it looks like uh, it, to store it. So it kind of looks like those old-fashioned um, wooden spools that you see, where ribbon is is uh, wrapped around. Basically, it is kind of a uh, a ribbon that you can then either use the, the the whole length of it, or you can cut it up and use it um, in pieces in your journals. Okay, let me show you this one. This one's a a, a long one. Um, after this video, I probably will put these in my in my Etsy shop for sale. These ones that I'm showing you here. And this one is this one's quite long. I'll tell you the measurement in a minute. Oops. This one is. about 42 inches long for this piece and you'll notice that it has um, I'll point out some of the things that it has on here it has fabric pieces it has embroidery that I embroidered on here it has some buttons various uh, fabric stitches this one happens to be a piece of trim that came off a, a, a dress my niece uh, when she was when she was about four or five, uh, she had kept all of her daughter's dresses, my great niece's dresses, and so I made a quilt out of Maddie's, Maddie's dresses that she had up to that point, and also some other clothes, not just dresses, but uh, blouses and so on, too. Um, you can use lace. Smart. This is a, a piece of uh, an old... Uh, embroidered napkin that I got from my mother-in-law. Um, they used to embroider everything, the, the table runners and napkins and of course handkerchiefs and all of that kind of stuff. A yo-yo charm. There's some more charms. Here's some little lazy daisy stitches and I'll show you this, this various 
way of doing it. Okay. Here's a couple of more of these um, to show you the length of them. Lace. This is a, a bias tape bow that I tied. Sometimes you can glue things down if um, if you don't want to sew them, or um, you can sew them also. It doesn't it doesn't matter? Excuse me. <coughs> There's my sneeze for the day. I always have to have my get my sneeze in. Here's another. This is a smaller piece. And like I said, these could be used as is, or they can be cut up to fit on your various projects. Um, once you get going on them, you kind of can't stop. I'm going to show you now some, some fabric uh, little handbags that I have in my Etsy shop. These are made out of old jeans that, of course, have been washed. And um, the size is listed on, on my in my Etsy shop, the size of them. And I did use some slow stitching on these. This is why I'm, I'm uh, showing you these. Uh, I could have used more slow stitching on them, and I wanted to do more slow stitching. But um, it was very, very difficult to get through this, this uh, jeans material. So if you're going to do something like this uh, uh, in the way of a, a fabric purse, I would suggest you do the uh, the slow stitching uh, on a different kind of a fabric, a lighter weight fabric. And this I, I slow stitch all down to the to here. This is a, a one of um, I believe Artie Mae's Digitals, which I printed on fabric and cut it out, and then I sewed it down, lace, ribbon, etc. And this is uh, one of those over the or. Uh, bags that can fit over your shoulder or uh, cross body. There's one of them. There's another one that has some slow stitching in it. I slow th stitch all around. This is also another digital that was printed onto fabric. This was also Artie Mae's. And this was slow stitch on here. Sort of like, uh, kind of, if you're a quilter, you'll know about the crazy quilting. It's sort of like that, the slow stitching method. Yeah, I have some more slow stitching on the back here where I applique these on the lace and the fabrics and the yo-yos. Okay, one more. This one doesn't have as much slow stitching on. This is, this is uh, some stitching, but mostly uh, has been glued down. There we go. Okay, these are on my Etsy shop. Okay, I'm going to show you the method for doing the slow stitch. I have started on on this piece. You can, like I said, you can use any any size piece you want, and also any width of a piece that you want. This is a little bit wider than the, the ones I normally did do, um, but I I just happen to have this this piece of of uh, muslin, so I decided to go for it. Um, my mother is the one that taught me how to embroider, and she when she taught us, she used to tell us stories about. Having learned from the nuns, she went to a convent school, my mom did, and um, that would have been in the, probably in the 30s, 40s, and uh, the nuns insisted that they, when they gave them the embroidery lessons, they insisted that they look at the back first before they even looked at the front. So if you can imagine that, you know, that all your back stitches would have to be to be perfect. Well, mine aren't, that's for sure. And I don't really strive to do that. Uh, some people, 
so they can save they can save thread by doing that. And if you do have a a really expensive thread, uh, that's a, probably a good idea to save thread by by not you know going across like I did here and so on. But when you finish completely finish it, you can back back it with a with another piece of fabric. Either sew it or glue it down. Okay, so let's say that you're first starting. You want to get the piece of fabric that you want, and you can add to this too. You can add you could add another piece later on over this way or whatever, however you want to go. I did kind of start in the center. And what I did was I overlapped a few pieces of fabrics where I wanted them. You can see here where I've started to put more down. Um, let's pick another piece of fabric here. Okay, here's kind of a, a crown. Put this on the end here. Uh, you can either pin them down or you can use, I have some of them pinned down here, but I'll also show you this method. Just um, put a little bit of glue under there just to keep it down. If you use a glue stick, you should not have any worries going through that with your needle. I'm sure those of you that don't uh, want to do hand stitching, you could probably do this on a machine too, especially some of you uh, ladies who might have a an embroidery machine. I don't, but um, that would that could be very pretty on here too. Okay, and you use the same method you do with your um, all of your uh, snippet rolls. You just keep overlapping and. Putting things on where you want them. I kind of do it as I go. I don't like do the whole entire thing first and then and then start my stitching. I kind of do it as I go, and then that way I can I can add things that are you know maybe more of an appropriate color after I see where the where the stitching is going. Now sometimes, like like say right here, this is where I overlapped two pieces and I sewed it together, and I got some um, got some stitches on the the part of the muslin, just the plain part of the muslin, and that's fine. Um, that is kind of doubled up, but I probably will want to put something here because I I won't want that to be quite quite that thin right there. Okay, so basically you thread your needle. I've already started on, on this piece here. And I'm doing an overcast stitch here, which is sort of like an applique stitch, where you go in and out. I'll show you the way you, you go in and out um, on here. And you catch the fabric part, and then you go in and catch the thing you're sewing to the fabric, which in this case is this crocheted piece of, um, uh, of, of it, this was one of the pieces from my niece's, one of my niece's dresses. It's fun to find all the different things you can find to, to use on these. Now I'm up here near the top. And I think what I'll do is I'll do, and this is the basic slow stitch. It's just a running stitch. And you can make it as narrow or as wide as you want it. And it doesn't, it really does not have to be perfect. That's kind of the charm of it, is it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, I am going to go down this way, and I'm going to do some more attaching the side of this to the background. Just kind of a matter of going up and down. Now you can go down here and then come up here. It's a little bit tricky with this heavy fabric. 
and I'll show you that how to do that. You go down on the outside and then you come up a little ways away from where you came up before and then you keep you just keep doing that. And that's basically the the um, overcast or the applique stitch. There are lo lots of different applique stitches. You know the thing I like about art in general and crafts is that there's no right or wrong way of doing it. You can kind of get your own technique going. It's it's sort of whatever it works for you. And the, and there are probably 20 different ways to do each thing you do, each kind of craft or each kind of art work. 20 or even more. So don't worry about that you're doing it the right way. You might want to worry a little bit about how it looks, but don't worry about a whole lot about how it looks. Especially on something like this, because it's kind of the charm of it. So, you know, this is kind of a thicker part, so I had trouble going through there. I think I am going to end there, because see how my how my thread, I don't have too much left on there, so I'm just going to leave that back there, and I'm going to, I'm going to end in that spot. <coughs> And I'll pick up another color later and go throughout here. I'll show you the basic um, running stitch again or slow stitch. Actually, I think all the stitches are called slow stitch. I've got some of this uh, kind of salmon color thread. I like that. You can use as many thicknesses of thread as you like. And as usual, let me get a knot in there. Okay. This is a six strand regular embroidery floss. And I sometimes use the six strands, but most of the time I like to use the uh, separated into three strands. So that's what I'm doing here three strands on each side and I just kind of hold it up and go very slowly so as not to knot it up. Pick it up back down here. And the reason I hold it up is so that it can unwind as I go. Yeah, I was unwinding. Then I'll put one piece aside to use later. And I'll thread my needle. I'm using a fairly big size uh, eye needle. You can you can get all kinds of sizes of, of needles, but the important thing here to remember is to try to get one that has a larger eye because sometimes this thread is, is a little bit um, sometimes this thread is a little bit thick to go through all of these. And of course, you know, whenever you get on camera you can't thread a needle worth a darn. <laughs> okay. I'm going to tell you a, a hint that I used for threading a needle, and it's a quilting hint. If your thread is dark color, like like this, or black, or green, or blue, hold it against a white background, like this. If your thread is white, hold it against a black background, such as such as this right here. And it makes it a lot easier to see see the um, eye of the needle. There we go. Okay, then I you don't have to notch your thread. I, do, I always do, so not my thread. Okay. I'm gonna start up here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some running stitches that go up and down here. Now you can, uh, this is fun to do like oh, sitting in front of the TV. I just take a basket of stuff and I have it by my chair. This is my basket. 
Then I also have some bags of stuff that I go into and get, get pieces out as I go. Like I said, if you want to pre-plan your, your, your whole thing before you go, before you start it, that's fine too. Or pick, at least pick out the colors that you might want to work with. And most of the time it's good to get some kind of contrast in the thread. If I would have used like ivory thread here, you wouldn't be able to see it. And you know, so what good would that be? <laughs> you want to, you want to do work where you're going to be able to see the stitches. Okay. Okay, so I'm not going to go too far down. And I'm going to turn around and go the other way. And you can do these rows of, of the uh, stitches as close together or as far apart as you want. And, um, this is where we're using a thinner fabric for the background, like like this muslin. This is where that works a lot better because you can, you know, do a running stitch where you put where you put the needle and thread in three or four times before you pull it back out again, and that saves quite a bit of time that way. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going on the edge here on this one to uh, sew down this pretty uh, flower trim. I so appreciate all of you joining my channel. I came over from Gail. Gail, hi, Gail Augustinelli was so kind as to post my video on her channel and a lot of you folks came over from there and I so appreciate that. And a lot of you also seem to have a lot of fun with the the quiz that I that I did for um uh identifying the different um journal makers by the, by what they said on when they were making their journals or by where they were from, or uh, that type of thing. And uh, it sounds like you guys had a really fun time do taking the quiz. So that's cool. Okay, now I'm going to go back up a ways. I'll show you how to do another stitch. It's called the Lazy Daisy Stitch. Normally, I would probably go back and and go along this go along this line also with a stitch, but I'm going to um, show you how to do that lazy daisy stitch. So I'm going to go over here onto the blue, and what I do is I make a loop like a flower petal. I make a loop with my with my thread and I go down where I just came up then I I come up with my needle about where I want that that loop to be and then I go up over the top and pull it pull it kind of you pull it kind of loosely now I'm going to go back down and come back up in the middle doesn't have to okay we had a little gap there but I'll, I'll splice that together and then do the second petal of here it doesn't matter which way you go around you can go around either way and I usually do four or five petals okay and I'm, I'm going down where I just came up then going out as large as I want my petal to be and I'm I'm careful not to get caught on the the any uh, pins that I have in there. And I'm going to pull it. And I'm going to go right down, 
tacking that petal down like that. Okay, I'm coming up in the middle again. Making a loop. You don't have to make that loop come all the way down like that. Just so you make it, you know where the loop's going to be. Then you come out about as far as you came out on these other ones. So the petals are about all the same size, but they don't have to be exact, of course. With me, nothing is exact. Okay, and you can either pull this down like this and come back up again, or you can do it all in one, all in one uh, motion. Okay, I'm gonna come back up to the middle again. Now remember, I said we're gonna do probably about five of these, so we'll do on here. back down and this time I think I'll come back up again with this. Oops. In the middle. Loop it around. Sometimes it helps if you put it down onto a flat surface. And then you go down one last time. Now I usually make I usually make a French knot out of a different color of thread. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that. Um, let's see. I'm gonna make some more daisies here in a minute. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another needle and thread it <clears throat> so that I can put a fresh knot right in the middle of that daisy. Let's see. Let's go with a, should we go with a yellow, gold, I think this is more of a gold. I'm going to try using six strands and see and show you how that works. Gives you a little bit of a thicker, I think I am, if I can thread it through this smaller needle. back there. Disregard this needle. Okay, to make the French knot, which is the little center of the flower, you come up as much in the middle as you can get. And straight up. Then it also, like I said, it helps to have a like a lap uh, like if you're watching TV or something, to have a, a lap tray or something there, or even a book or a magazine. And you wrap it around three times. Since I have thick thread, if you have thinner thread, you might want to wrap it around four times. And you go back down. And you're holding this thread as you go back down. These French knots take practice, so you might want to just do a bunch of them on a small piece of fabric and then if they turn out really well then you can always just sew the fabric down to your uh, slow stitch roll. Okay, let's make one without a flower. As you can see that's what, even though this is, this is uh, machine embroidered, 
I'm sure these little knots here are French knots. Okay, and you wrap it around your needle one, away from your yourself, two, three, and then sometimes you can hold it back with this finger and then put it down through. You just want to hold this as, as tight as you can, but not super tight because you need you'll need to get that needle through there. And then just pull it slowly. <coughs> Making sure it doesn't get caught around anything. Because it will. I don't get caught around it. anything that's in its way. <laughs> okay. Then I put my my fingernail right in the middle of that knot and kind of pull it a little little bit. So you can actually see the center. I'll do it one more time. again. One, two, three. If you um, lose sight of how to do this, another thing to do you might want to do is get on, on a, um, a YouTube channel that shows you really, really close up how to do these different stitches. Like look up embroidery stitches. And there's all kinds of books on it too also and articles. But online, there's people that show you all of the embroidery stitches, all of the crochet stitches, all of the knitting stitches. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's an excellent reference to have. Okay, I don't want to bore you too much with all this, this stitch, stitch, stitching. So we'll... What else we can put on here so you can show how I so I can show how I might design this more. Okay. Need these two needles up here. And you can you could do that if you wanted to have like and sometimes I do have like three or four different colors going at, at a time that you can switch back to. Now, how would I sew the the uh, these uh, little guys down? I probably might try a little little tiny dab of um, glue. I think I'm going to use um, fiber tack fiber tack glue. Just a little tiny dot of it. I don't need too much of it on here enough to hold it down a bit. And then when I go back, I can make some stitches in between these little daisy flowers. But they're stuck down there for now, so that that's good. I'll get a wet wipe to uh, clean off my fabric tech. Okay, see now those are, I can take this, this pin out and that gives me a little bit easier space to rem maneuver my hands around in here, you know, without poking myself a lot. If you'll notice on this end, I started kind of on this end and you can start anywhere on here and work around. Um, <clears throat> and as a matter of fact, I think that's a kind of a good hint is to, is to work around. Don't always just like start at the end and then go straight through to the other end. Uh, you can do that, I mean, that certainly is okay, 
but what will happen if you do that is you probably will get you know like everything the same here and then this will all be different and this way you can if you do it like jumping around you can uh, tie tie your different colors together like I have a blue here and the blue here again and I might want to repeat some of these other ones in here especially if I'm going to use it all as one piece if I'm not going to use it all as one piece then I don't need to worry as much about it if I'm going to cut it up or whatever you can also do them in small pieces like I'm sure you've seen Gail do these those of you that um have come over from Gail's channel um, she has done these in the past which are smaller pieces of of uh, just calico fabric that she's layered up and then slow stitched through and I, I believe she uses the glue stick to glue them down and then just does them you know smaller pieces and these are wonderful to use as like pockets and so on and you could you could add charms or whatever you might want to 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 these as well. Maybe um a ribbon or a bow. Okay, let's take a let's let's do a bow here for a moment, and I'll show you. Actually, there's a couple of different ways to to do to do a bow. Cut a couple of links and I'll show you. Anything goes on these that you can think of. Um, and like I said, I use um, this right here. When my mother-in-law was still alive, she was she did a lot of cleaning out. And the ladies back in the old days, she because she would be well over a hundred now. They always had their handkerchiefs that they carried around. They didn't really ever use their handkerchiefs. But they carried them with them. And then when they got home, they threw them in the wash. And they washed them all up. Well, so she gave me a whole bunch of her old handkerchiefs. And this was actually one that I cut a little piece off of. This was just a, uh, some trim that I got at Hobby Lobby. And so you can, you can use old stuff. You can use new stuff. You can use pieces of clothing like I did uh, for, for my niece's quilt. Uh, to make a bow, you can just make it, make one. So. And you can wrinkle it up. Just squash it up in your hand. Wrinkle it up. I like the way that looks. Squashed, squashed bow look. And this looks like it needs to be cut on an angle a little more. It's just that. Okay. But most likely probably what I do is I would glue that glue that on there. A little bit of fabric tag, even though I'm not, I haven't sewn this yet, which I probably would do normally. Would sew it first before I glued the bow on, but I, I should be able to still reach around and get in there for it. Okay, there we go. Get my wet wipe to dab up any excess glue that I have there. Another way that you can do your um, sew your bow down. As you can get your this this particular one has three three strands of fabric. Ooh, that one's going to be kind of tough to get all that in there. I think I'm just going to show you with the one with the one strand. And you can always wait until until you're all finished or 
fairly finished and then start sewing on like your charms and your bows and things like that I'm just showing you kind of pretending like we're finished okay I don't think that's gonna work cuz I I'm out of big hold needles so basically what I would do is I would um, Let's see, I put this down somewhere, how about over here, and I'd sew it, in this case I'll glue it, just to show you, I'd sew it in the middle, Now then I'd wait for that to dry and then I'd tie it into a bow. The advantage of doing it like this is that it's already tied into a bow and it probably won't come loose. Whereas this one could eventually come loose and you'd have to retie it. Okay, so let's get some other things in here. A few more fabrics. Here's some lace. That might be pretty. Now as you go, try not to cover up the stitching that you already did. You already, you know, <clears throat> there's so many nice stitching on there. And here's a, a good reason why gluing it down sometimes works because then you can always pick it up and, and move it around a little bit. I'm going to cut this here. Okay. And I probably wouldn't put this back. I'd probably use it again somewhere else in the... In the piece. Hope you all are feeling well, feeling okay these days, and getting by. I know there's a lot of stress going around in the world, in our country, everything. Just keep plugging along, and I find that my crafts really help me keep the stress level down. And yay for that! That's what I think. You just keep working along. Still need to probably fill in some of these areas underneath the flowers. Let's see what else I have. I might I might do this one again. See how long I'm repeating? <clears throat> when it's here, I'm repeating it somewhere else in the piece. of pinning and gluing. You'll find yourself get a lot of threads as you go. And you you don't ever have to quit adding things. You can you can keep adding things as long as you want. Even when you get finished, you might want to um, add some lace to it. I am. Um, I got some lace at Hobby Lobby yesterday, which is beautiful. <clears throat> If I wanted this to be wider, I could consider putting some lace on the end. 
maybe. Putting some on the bottom. Be pretty. That would make it that would make it quite a bit wider, wouldn't it? If you had a if you had a spot for that. You might want to refer to my to get more ideas, you could refer back to my another video that I did on a snippet roll, which a snippet roll is basically the same thing, only you use paper instead of fabric. You also use lace and and uh, charms and and you don't sew the things down, you glue them down. And I also did mine where I took a strip of tape, wide, very wide tape, and put it sticky side up and then layered stuff on it. And that is on my YouTube channel as well. I'll try to reference you back to that one from this one. But see how you can just you can just keep adding things to it. Keep on going. It's very relaxing. Especially for those of you that already know how to embroider. If you don't know a lot of the embroidery stitches, you can just stick to the to the slow stitch, to the running stitch. And it still looks really cool. Drink of water. Um, the way I did the way I did this over here was I took um, I took a piece of fabric wider than this and I just folded it up I uh, kind of pinned it as I went I'll show you here Folded it as I went along. Turn it. Go. Or you can take an existing piece that you already have sewn, like I have on here. And you can cut that off and sew it down however you want it on here. I think that's a little bit too bright for this one, but if you were doing one that was uh, like a sparkly one or something, you could use that. So, I hope you enjoyed that. And like I said, look for my for my giveaway should be uh okay so before I leave you today I just wanted to um, show you a few more of the uh, finished snippet rolls that I had the slow stitch and um, you can see where I use the the running stitch the lazy daisy stitch um, and so on. I am going to put these three pieces in my Etsy shop. So they'll be in there right away. And um, I'll pick for the drawing, like I said, the beginning of this video, I'll pro most likely pick for the drawing around Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of, of uh, this coming week. Today is uh, October 31st, a Halloween. Um, so I will do that next week and uh, I'm like I said I'm so glad that all of you have joined me and uh, hope you keep well and I wish you peace of mind thank you bye now